hi guys welcome to my channel so in my last video I talked about my experiences and steps that I took in transitioning from my country Nigeria to United States of America for my master's degree as an international student and I also promised in that same video that I was gonna make a series of videos in order to point out areas that my amateur self did not consider or plan for before embarking on that trip. So today, I'm going to be pointing out three areas that I think is very important for you to research on and make plans towards before you start this process. Number one is going to be funding. So we all know that education costs money, right? And I'm sure you must have done your own little research to find out that you can actually fund yourself or seek for someone to sponsor you as a family member, friend or whoever that is in your life. That is not the area that I want to touch. I just want to point out that you have to also put into consideration that this particular information that is needed from you in regards to funding are areas that the immigration are very much interested in. Even the school that you are applying for is also interested to know that you can come into this school and pay your tuition and other fees without you being a liability to anyone. So when you are presenting a document to show or to prove that you have a good amount of money to sustain you during the period of your stay in where, whichever country that you are going to be studying at, it's very important that you are being truthful doing that. Do not say something else and in the statement you have a different story going on. You have to make sure that the amount of money that you claim that you have in your account matches what is, is on the document that you will be presenting to the school and the immigration whenever you go for your air phone visa interview. So having talked about that one, another pointer that I have today for you is for you to make sure that you research the school in question. Do not pick a school just because you love the landscape. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong about all that, but you have to really be careful and research the school that you are uh, interested in. Take this from me, because in my own time, I didn't have that opportunity because we've already picked out my school solely because I had an uncle that is a professor in this particular school. But for you, now you're getting a first-hand information to ensure that you are picking the right school that will offer you something that you could work with, something that could assist you to make your stay a little bit easier, both financially and every other area that could benefit you. So one thing I know that you should do whenever you're considering a school is to find out that this particular school has an international office that is solely bent on finding information that will guide you all through your stay in the school. Find out from your counselor if this particular school is located in an area where you could work. Find out how many hours you can be able to work find out if can you work outside the school find out if they can pay you minimum wage every state has its minimum wage sometimes some schools are even generous enough to pay students more than the minimum wage ask questions send emails call them on the phone find out if there are stores that are around the school distances to go to the hospital transportation system set up to assist the international student because there are times 
you need to go to the hospital, right? There are times that you also need to go to the stores. There are times that you also have to go out to get food. Another thing that you also have to ask questions on is if it's necessary for you to stay inside the school, like the school dorms. In my own time, I stayed for my first year in the dorm and it wasn't affordable at all. It was very expensive. But the good thing is that the school offers you the opportunity to live outside the school if you choose to. So what I did was after the first year, I went ahead to get a house outside the school and I stayed with my cousin and we shared the rent. In doing so, that really caught a lot of expenses that I used to put towards housing. So that is something you might want to consider when you arrive to your school. You might look around and see who you could share the rent with and stay outside the school to save money. So this is very important. As if the school has any type of assistance for the students, especially for the international students. Most times there are financial aids, but you have to be a citizen for you to be able to qualify for them. But then again, there is also some financial programs that are set up uh, for in the international students. Another area that you might want to consider finding out if they have such thing available is cafeteria because it's fairly cheap when you eat in the school instead of going out to eat at the fast food stores. When it comes to shopping for books, school will give you a list of the books that is required of you to use in every particular section but you don't have to go by their own list. You don't have to buy from them because it's very new and it's gonna be expensive. An option is for you to look for thrift stores. You can um, ask around. There are stores that can sell you fairly used books or used book. And all these are gonna be in good condition for you to be able to use them. You can even sell them back once you've completed uh, using these particular books. You just have to ask the right questions. And these are ways for you to save money. People um, that were already in the system showed me how to do it. I make sure that I, I could buy like fairly used and I make sure I keep it in the same good condition so that at the end of the day, I can be able to sell it back and make a buck or two. For clothing, depends on the time that you arrive and depending on the nature of the weather where you will be attending your school. You don't have to spend so much on clothing. There are trip stores where you could purchase fairly used clothes or even clothes that people haven't even used just because of one reason or the other. They bought it and it never um, fitted them right and they decided to just give it away. Some schools here in the States do for the international students that I consider very generous. Some of them go to the length of arranging for shuttles to make sure that as you are arriving at the airport that these shuttles are ready to pick you up from the airport. I mean, coming in for the first time, into this state could be challenging for you to be able to navigate from one point to another because we are talking about a new place that you haven't been to before if you don't have anyone here to help you out wouldn't that be very kind of a school to have such system set up to come pick you up as you are arriving here you know that puts your mind at rest that you don't have to worry about uh, you getting lost <laughs> I learned about some schools that have systems set up to help you as you come here to have access to phones. They even go ahead to pay for the particular airtime that you will be using. I mean, like for the first time that you start using your phone, all you have to do is when that particular month expires, 
then you start paying subsequently. I mean, no one did that for me whenever I got here. These are perks that if I had known about or if I could have afforded, I'll have gone for such schools that I know goes at any length to make sure that I have a very seamless transition in. When you get to the school, definitely is in your court to kind of create your own support group. I mean, go out there, make friends, try and learn about organizations that are in the school. I remember at the time I was in school, um, the International Students was one of the groups that I joined and it really helped me. He uplifted me, I met different people, I made friends and everyone carried each other along. Everyone pitched in uh, one time or the other to make sure that everyone is doing okay. They ask about you when they don't see you. They offer sometimes even to take you for grocery shopping. They offer to assist you in one way or the other. So these are groups that you should be looking out for and make sure that you join one. Moving forward to the third but not the least point that I have today is climate weather. Some areas here in the United States of America are warm, some areas are pretty cold, so you decide what you like. For me, I know that my African sisters and brothers definitely complain a lot about the areas where it's cold. So if you're someone who doesn't like the cold weather, you might want to consider these places that stays warm and <laughs> it's up to you to ask questions to know for sure before applying in such places. You find out that you have to start battling with changing your own currency to the currency value of where you are at and that might not be funny because um, if you are gonna be coming into the United States of America for your studies, definitely dollar is gonna be higher than if you're coming from Africa. So these are things that you have to put into perspective before coming in here and try to stop yourself when you are comparing your money to the value of the dollar because when you keep doing that, you will not want to do anything financially okay all you have to do is learn the value of the currency you're working with at that particular time just go from there okay thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you in my next video have a good one